Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 30. It's on the electric field of parallel plates. And we've already learned so far that the electric field will look like this. It'll go from the positive to the negative, but we haven't got into the details of that. Before we get there, let me give you a quick application of this. In biology, we use gel electrophoresis. And what you do is create an electric field across this gel, and then you can add DNA fragments to it. So we're gonna put DNA fragments in right here. And what happens is they'll respond to that electric field. And DNA has a negative charge, and so what they're gonna do is they're gonna migrate across that electric field. Now what's interesting is the DNA is each gonna have a different size, and so the small fragments will be able to move really, really far, and the larger fragments won't move as far and so we can create a DNA fingerprint. And so if we have two parallel plates and we make sure that they're oppositely charged and we also make sure that that charge is uniformly distributed and we also make sure that we're really far from the edge, as long as those three things are true, then we can represent the electric field like this. And if that's our electric field, we know that the electric field strength is going to act perpendicular to those plates and it's also going to be constant or uniform throughout. In other words, no matter where you test the electric field inside here, it's going to give you the same value. It's going to be the same direction and it's always going to be the same size. Now how do you figure out the electric field strength here? There's a couple of ways we could do it. We could look at um, the voltage across that gap and then the displacement, or R, across the gap, and that would tell us the electric field strength. Or we could just use the charge of the plates and the area of those individual plates, and that's going to give us the electric field strength as well. The last thing you should pick up from this video is what happens if we add a charged particle to this electric field? What happens if I take a proton, for example, and I give it a velocity in the horizontal right here? Can you predict what's going to happen as it enters into the electric field? Remember, positive charges are going to follow the electric field and so watch what happens as we let it go so it bends like that but you can see that it continues to have the same velocity in the horizontal what we're really doing is changing it in the vertical and so this works exactly like projectile motion however projectile motion that electric field is going to be the gravitational field so can you predict what will happen if I take a negative charge and add it in that direction which way do you think it's going to go and like that. It looks just like throwing a baseball, that parabolic curve, because it's the same thing. It's moving horizontally and that's not affected by that change in the force in the vertical. So in order to look at the electric field of parallel plates, it's sometimes easier to look at them individually. So if we look at the positive plate and we draw the electric field lines, it's going to look like that. It's all moving out from the plate. And now if we draw the negative, it's going to be moving towards the plate. And so if I now simply just combine those two, it's going to look like this. Now you can see on the edge, in order to figure out which way they're going, we'd have to do some vector addition. And so we're just going to say that we're really far from the edge. And then you can also see up here and down here that that neck electric field, since it's so close together in relation to, to the overall length of this plate, that it's also a net of zero. The only place where they're going in the same direction is going to be in the middle. And so we can treat that as our net electric field, that uniform electric field on the inside. And if we, have to, if we want to figure out what the electric field strength is, we could use the charge and the area of those plates. And so if we use this equation, what we've got here is the electric electric field strength is equal to Q, which is going to be the charge, divided by the permittivity of free space. Remember that is a constant, and so that's going to offer resistance to an electric field. And then we're going to multiply that times area. And so we, if we increase the charge on the top, then we're going to increase the electric field strength. And if we decrease the area, then we're going to increase electric field strength. So let me kind of walk you through that in a PHET simulation. We've got here our two plates, and we can add charge to that. And the charge will show up right here, and then we can measure the electric field down below. And so what we're looking at is what happens when we increase Q, and then what happens when we increase or change A. And so what we're going to do is put our electric field sensor right in the middle. So you can see there's no electric field strength. And as we add charge to it, watch what happens to our electric field. It's getting greater. And so what we could do is at this point, we could solve for E. If I add more charge or I add more of the negative charge, you can see I'm increasing that electric field strength. Now what happens if we change the plate area? As we decrease the plate area, you can see that we're increasing the electric field strength. 
Because it's in the denominator, if we decrease it, we increase the electric field strength. If we increase the area, what we're doing is decreasing the electric field strength. And so it's a really nice relationship between charge and the area of the plates and then the electric field strength. But we could also go at it in a different direction. We could look at the voltage or the potential across that gap and then the distance or the displacement between the two. Now voltage, remember, is the amount of work that we would have to do to move a positive charge against that electric field. So that's going to be the voltage. And then R is going to represent the displacement or the distance between those two plates. And so here is our equation. Again, if we increase the voltage, we're going to increase the electric field. Field. And if we decrease that displacement, we're going to increase the electric field as well. And so we've got another little simulation right here. So what I've done is I've got the electric field sensor in the middle, and now we've got a voltmeter. And so now as I add voltage, I'm increasing the volts. Watch what happens to my electric field. So an increase in the voltage as we move it up to 1.5 volts is going to increase that electric field. And we could move it in the opposite direction, and we're going to have the same thing. The more voltage you have, the more potential difference you have, then the greater that electric field strength is. But watch what happens when we de decrease the distance between the two. So as we make it closer and closer together, we're increasing the electric field. Since R is in the denominator, by decreasing it, we're actually increasing the electric field strength. Last thing you really have to understand is how motion of particles inside an electric field is similar to motion of objects on our planet. So imagine I were to roll a ball across a table, and at the moment it goes off the edge of the table, we take a similar ball and we drop it from a similar height. Uh, you've maybe done this before. Which one's going hit to the, hit the ground first? Well, the right answer is that they're both going to hit the ground at the same time. And the reason why is that they're both in a gravitational field. And so even though this one is moving horizontally, that doesn't affect the force and therefore the acceleration in the vertical. They're both going to fall at the same rate. Now charged particles work the same way inside an electric field. And so if this is our electric field, what happens if we add a positive charge to it? It's going to follow those electric field lines. But what happens if we shoot a positive, let's say a proton, horizontally into the electric field? It's just like that ball rolling off the table. It's going to accelerate down at the same rate as that point charge did to begin with. Or if we had a negative charge, and that negative charge we shoot into the electric field like this, it's going to do not what balls do on our planet. It's going to actually go against the field. And that's what's cool about electromagnetism. It's going to go in that direction. But it's still following this similar path as projectile motion because we have this set electric field. And so did you learn to create representations of the electric field between parallel plates? Again, we have to be far enough from the edge and the plates have to be close enough together. Did you learn to calculate the magnitude and determine the direction of the field? Again, we could use voltage and displacement or, or separation, or we could use charge and area. And then finally, did you learn to represent the motion of electrically charged particles inside an electric field um, similar to that of projectile motion? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.